actions of discipleship, exalting the Lord in fear. That's what we've been talking about the last three days, and we're going to talk about it again today. We talk about the fear of the Lord being respect for the Lord and the fact that his love is unending, his power is unending, and his judgment is fair. And he will bless us if we bless him, and he'll blister us if we don't listen to him. So his judgment is fair, positive and negative. We talked about Jacob the trickster, Joseph the person who was deserted by his family. We talked about Moses who was leading a bunch of rebels. We talked about David who was against a giant. We talked about Nehemiah who had a great job. He was a statesman with a huge job to do. God worked a miracle for him. We talked about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego who went to the fiery furnace and was sentenced to death but ended up living anyhow. One more we want to talk about is Daniel. Old Daniel in Daniel chapter five, uh, chapter 3 verse 17 says, If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. He will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. He was there for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Now he was there for Daniel in chapter 6 verse 16. Then the king commanded, and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. Now the king spake and said unto Daniel, the, Thy God whom thou servest continually. Listen, this was the king who said this. He will deliver thee. The king said that, not Daniel. The king had already seen the miracles of God. The king loved Daniel. He hated what was happening. He was tricked into it. And he knew that God was going to deliver Daniel. Now, if a lost man can have that kind of faith, what in the world will God do for a man who does have faith? You see, the Lord follows, uh, those who follow the Lord, brings perfection into our lives. When you follow him, it brings perfection. Psalms chapter 138, verse 8. The Lord will perfect that which concerneth me. Thy mercy, O Lord, endureth forever. Forsake not the works of thine own hands. So when you're following him, it allows perfection to happen in your life. And there's not going to harm come to you. Everything's going to work out. All things work together for good to them that are called of God and called according to his purpose. And so not only does it bring perfection, it brings confidence. If we follow him, it brings confidence into our lives. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 26, For the Lord shall be thy confidence and shall keep thy foot from being taken. The devil can trip you up all day long, but you'll never hit the ground as long as you're following the Lord. Just follow him. Have confidence that he can defeat your enemy or your enemies, whichever the case may be. So it brings perfection. It brings confidence, but it also performs miracles. The Lord performs miracles for those who trust him. Look at Romans chapter 4, verse 20. He staggered not at the promise of God. He had faith through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God and being fully persuaded that he had, the, had what he had promised he was able to perform, and therefore it was imputed unto him for righteousness. Faith is the key to the power of God. When God looks down and sees you trusting him, it revs him up and pumps him up to bless you. Philippians 1, 6, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it to the day of Jesus Christ. And then Romans 8, 31, what shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, <laughs> who can be against us? Nobody. Knowing who he is and all that he has done should cause us to rise up in a place of complete confidence so that we'll trust and obey his every command. Trust him today. He will be perfection in your life, confidence in your life, and he'll perform miracles for you. He will be your strength for today and your hope for tomorrow. Thanks for joining us.